so many brands and businesses who have got such an incredible message to share with a wider audience and just an amazing product, service, whatever it is, but they're just held back by just not quite sometimes having clarity on exactly what it is they really want to get out there. And so I've ended up sort of trying to help people do that because it's something I'm really passionate about, that if you've got that thing going on, then uh, you know really you need to get that out to as many people as you possibly can. So, um, can everyone see what that is? It is a lovely dollar bill. And that's up there because Bill Gates famously once said, if I had only one dollar left, I'd spend it on marketing. So how many of you in the room who've got your own brand or business spend money on marketing or invest time? Yeah, time or money, all, all good. Who would think they maybe should invest a little bit more money or time? Then you will have my lucky dollar. <laughs> no, it's only a dollar, but I did give one woman that and she got home. So I put it in my little travel drawer and there was 350 quid that I never knew I had. So you can start with that. You never know. You just never know. Okay. So I really believe that you are the brand. Whether you've got a brand or not, you're still a brand. How you present yourself, the impression you make. You know, we all know that there's this three seconds. Is it three seconds when you walk into a room? If it's a job interview, they know whether you've got the job within the first three seconds. And whether you have a product or a service, you are still a brand. And it's so important to have real clarity on who you are and what your USP is, your unique selling point. And I sometimes call this your unique brilliance. And we spell that Y-O-U, your unique brilliance. It's what, what is it about you that really makes a difference? And it's so important, I believe, to have absolute clarity on that. And why? Well, the obvious thing, because people do business with those they like, know, and trust. So how many of you here go to a, a hairdresser? Most of you, at some point, yeah. I, I did the, I spoke, I did this talk, something similar to a group of men, of which almost all of them were bald. So I had to change that line. <laughs> so uh, anyway, so do you go to any hairdresser in any town? Answer: No, you don't. Do you? You go to the same. I go all the way to the Cotswolds to an organic hairdresser. It's a very specific USP. So do you go to a dentist? Yeah, even the guys go to a dentist. Again, any in any town? No, the one you like, know, and trust. Now, technically, you could of course go to any hairdresser or any dentist, because they've all got, you know, scissors and blow dryers and those things you put, they put in your mouth and that blue liquid that you rinse with. But we don't, do we? We go to the one we like, know and trust. We may not have absolute clarity on exactly what it is about them. It might not be a definite USP, but there is a sense. Sometimes it's, it's quite subconscious. We just feel safe and we feel they're the right people for us to work with. But the interesting bit, I believe, is that it's actually really quite difficult to get across to other people that, that energy unless you've really owned it for yourself. Yeah, so that's, this is what I try and help people recognize, to take, really take, get real clarity on who they are as well as the exact USP of their brand. And that often comes down to getting a handle on what it is about you, what's your story. Sometimes people say, what's the big why? You know, I'm sure you've heard the expression, what's the why that makes you cry? Why are you doing what you're doing? I mean, obviously you want to um, be financially successful and you want abundance, but I'm guessing that for most of you here, there will be another reason. You're doing what you're doing because you want to make some kind of a difference and because it's something that you're really passionate about. So I really love working with what I call heart-centered businesses, you know, people who are really, have really got a passion and a message to get out there. So if you've got clarity on your USP and if you know what's brilliant about you and you know the big why, why aren't we all as successful and out there as we might want to be? What, what would be the reason? Well, it's that classic thing of lack of self-esteem usually, and fear, some kind of fear that's holding us back. Fear that we might not be quite up to speed, might not be quite as good as other people in our arena. And it's a classic thing, however naturally confident you are, when it comes to your own business, so many women particularly have got this lack of complete self-esteem with, with who they really are. So who knows who this amazing woman is? So does anyone not know who she is? Oh, you've got homework, definitely. You've got to look her up. This is Louise Hay, amazing woman. She was 90 uh, this weekend. She's the founder of Hay House Publishing. It's the fastest growing publishing company in the world, despite the fact that a lot of publishing companies 
uh, not thriving. She didn't start her business till she was 60. Amazing woman. And her raison d'etre in life, if you like, is to encourage people to love themselves. Now, I went to one of her conferences. I was speaking at one of her conferences, and she basically said to us all, you need to like, kind of go to the ladies like, right now in the break, or well, those of you are women, obviously, and uh, look in the mirror and say, I love you. Now, that's not very British, is it? It's not very British at all. So there we were, you know, OK. <laughs> it didn't go well. Uh, but she did try to encourage us to do this. In fact, she goes as far as to carry a little mirror in her bra at all times that she just whips out. Hey, love you, kid. Um, but the truth of it is, for most of us, when we do look in the mirror, particularly first thing in the morning, you know, you look in the mirror maybe before you're going off to a business meeting or to make a really important pitch, and they stand, and this is what you see. Ah! <laughs> Seriously? You want me to put this face in front of my bank manager? You want me to try and talk to a group of women looking like this or feeling like this? It's not just how you look, it's the energy. Really? Honestly? And they reckon, you know, that actually, if the stuff that we say to ourselves if we had a small child next to us, we'd be had for abuse. Seriously. All of us, even, the young, even the, those of us who are enlightened and know all about mindfulness and know all about uh, you know, the importance of affirmations, still you get that little voice. Okay. So what do we, do we have here? Actually, it's an Anthony Gormley sculpture. I just thought it was so cool. I found it at Tate Modern. Can you all stand up for a moment? Sorry, that's really annoying, isn't it, when you've only just sat down? Okay. So let's do this fabulous, actually, before you do that, I want you just to imagine, just for a nanosecond, that you're really miserable, OK? Just, just for a second, you're really miserable, feel you're feeling really sad, depressed, OK? You can come back up now, because obviously it's not a very nice feeling. The interesting thing is, and why I asked you to do that, is because psychologists call it the cybernetic loop. They say it's not possible to cry standing up. It's, not, it's actually not possible. There's a message sent to your brain that everything has to go down when you're feeling sad. So now let's do the opposite and do a lovely Anthony Gormley power pose. Okay, feet lovely, root, lovely rooted into the ground, arms out to the side, chest up, open, okay? And then this is what Louise Hay would want you to do, so I'm going to do it. I want you to say after me, one, two, three, I want you to say, I am enough. One, two, three. I am enough. <laughs> yes, you really are. You can sit down now. I'll let you off. Now what's funny, what's interesting about that is that just that tiny, <laughs> tiny little exercise can really change how you feel about yourself, particularly if you've got in touch with all your unique brilliance. I did a similar talk to a bunch of property investors, and it was very funny because I asked them to do that and, and I explained the importance of, of really sort of empowering yourself, taking the, doing the right kind of breathing you know, before, before you go and see your bank manager or whatever it is. And these, I could see these guys thinking, the woman has actually gone mad. She, she's expecting me to walk into the offices of a, a very important investor and say, hello, I am enough. <laughs> no, 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 you can do it in the loo or whatever. It takes a second, okay, before you start. And the thing with confidence, I believe, is that you can fake it till you make it, okay? You don't have to be naturally incredibly confident. You don't have to naturally be a great public speaker. There are some tips, there are some tricks, there's some stuff you can do. And NLP, for anyone who's heard of NLP, is a very simple, very effective way um, to have a go at that. The next thing I think you really need clarity on, I'm whipping through this, is um, what it is you want. What's your fairy godmother dream? And I mention that because, again, once I've met a lot of companies who have got clarity on their USP. They know why they're doing what they're doing, but they don't know what they want. And you think, well, don't, don't be daft. It's obvious what I want. I want to be hugely successful. So I asked this question of one woman. Uh, oh, by the way, I was, a, I was a fairy godmother in Panto last year. <laughs> Thank you. You're, everyone was too young. You're meant to say, oh, no, you weren't. I actually was. Anyway, so I, I said, I wish I could have brought my wand. Um, I, so I met this uh, fabulous woman. It's a great client. And she uh, works in the business of um, the link between weight management and mindset. Very successful author and businesswoman. And I said to her, what's your one big fairy godmother dream? She said, that's easy. I would like the NHS to really get a handle on the link between weight management and mindset. That's my dream. And I said, OK, I'm going to be your fairy godmother. I'm going to go ting and grant you that wish. And here we are, a year down the line or whatever it is, and there's no more gastric bands or drugs for weight management. That's it. Job done. Yeah. But is that what she meant? 
she'd actually left herself out of her dream. Now, you might say, well, why would that matter? You know, from an altruistic perspective, it just matters that everyone, everyone benefits. But this was her USP. This was her unique brilliance, along with many other people, of course. And what she actually meant was, I want to become the go-to expert. I want to facilitate this link between weight management and mindset. Yeah? So having clarity on what you want, I think, is critically important. So what I try and help people recognise is that they need what I call the strategic four C's. Clarity on what it is they are, what their story is, what their USP is. Clarity on what they want. Content, obviously, if we had longer, we'd be talking a lot about how you actually can share your, your, your message, whether it's a product or a service, by um, educating people, by inspiring them. Uh, confidence, obviously, and uh, the right connections. So you're in the right place today. This is... Um, hopefully going to be a, a fantastic day for, for all of those things, for making those connections. Um, and then I really believe, I'm really, really passionate about helping people recognise that you should um, be your own best PR. Even if you work with PR agencies, and I know there are some here, you can make their job so much easier if you've got real clarity on what it is you want and you've got your ducks in a row. You know, the amount of times I've worked with clients and I've got an amazing opportunity for them. I meet them one day and the next day you get this incredible opportunity to have a full page spread in a, in a magazine or whatever. And I ring them up all excited and they send me a little bit of copy. Actually, it doesn't quite work that way. I often say, can you send me a couple of paragraphs and they send me 10 pages. <laughs> That's never good. Um, and then I'll say, OK, great, we need a high res image. And they send me something of them on the beach with their children from 1989. <laughs> Have you got a high-res shot, or have you got a, cu a cut-out of your product? No, I'll, I'll ask my son to take one in the garden. That not, might not work. Um, so I just think it's a case of um, really think about how you can be your own best PR, because you really are. You take, take ownership, and then, then you can help other people, and you can use the connections to help others to help you. Um, so I'm almost done. This is a really very short um, speech today, very short presentation today. But what I'd really love to encourage all of you is to get clarity on what's great about you, find your unique brilliance, and find a way of getting the confidence to stand and be in your brand, stand up and be counted, because you are the brand. The other thing that I hear an awful lot when I work with clients is they'll say, no, 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 I'm not the brand. It's not about me. Don't look at me. It's this jewellery that I've designed. It's the Reiki work that I do. It's the EFT that I practice. Uh, you know, it's my um, weight management program. But actually, it is about you. It's all about you. You are the brand. And it's really important, I believe, for you to take that on board and, and find a way, even if you're not naturally confident, as I've already said, fake it till you make it so you can stand in the spotlight and shine and then get your message out to a wider audience. So thank you so much for listening. I will be around. And uh, if you want to sign up for my free, um, a few little free digital things, I'm very happy to send to you. And uh, I look forward to seeing all of you later. Thank you.